Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video. I'm sitting in my hotel in North Carolina where I uh, was with clients last night. I'm going to be with more clients all day today and I'm going to leave the hotel here shortly. So I wanted to get this recorded before the market opens here Thursday morning. I, um, I probably don't have all the lighting set right. I don't know how good the video and audio quality is. We have a lot better equipment at my office in California and, and even in New York, we can get it to look and sound better. But when I'm just traveling with my little laptop, I always uh, wonder if I'm pulling this off or not. And probably my communications uh, department are not happy with me right now at how it looks and sounds, but hopefully it's good enough. Um, it, if it doesn't look and sound good, let's at least focus on the content. Uh, it's here, here's what took place this week in the market. It, the elevated volatility continued pretty, pretty high, maybe not as high as last week, which was really off the chain. But again, each day a triple digit move, um, minimally. Uh, I think we're now at 20 of the last 23 days have had a triple digit move up or down. Um, but 100, 200 is triple digit. That's different than 500, 600. And we were having 500, 600 each day last week. We had a couple of those this week too, 400 or so. But listen, the volatility is going to continue for a while because of this uncertainty. I am uh, curious as we get into earnings season if that could potentially be a catalyst for even further volatility as the high dispersion of results, certain companies creating really uh, tremendous outperformance in their earnings results and other companies underperforming and creating, um, you know, a pull the other way. I don't think so. I think earnings season has the potential to serve as a sort of stabilizer of some of that vol in the markets, but we'll have to wait and see. As far, as far as the, um, the issues this week, though, you think about it, the trade and tariff stuff, uh, kind of subsided a little bit. There was some encouraging rhetoric, at least out of China. I didn't think it was anything particularly new, but it seemed to calm markets a little. And yet um, you had the Speaker of the House uh, resign or retire, announce his retirement. There's this significant threat and escalation potential here out of Syria. Uh, a full FBI raid on the lawyer of the President of the United States and um, this two days of testimony, uh, highly, highly publicized testimony of one of the most high profile CEOs and companies in the country at the on the floor of Congress. So you had a lot of stuff going on in the news cycle, and yet it was kind of like a normal news week. Um, that's how much, how 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 crazy the kind of news world is these days. From my vantage point, the thing I'd be focusing on right now as an investor is a lesson I wrote about, I think, um, exhaustively in Dividend Cafe this week at our, our normal written commentary around the principle of absorbing market volatility. I love this thesis of saying when something's going on, you have one of these down 500 point days. Did my quality of life get altered today? I mean, it didn't, but it, it may require a little thoughtfulness to see that it didn't, understand it. But should volatility in and of itself be affecting the way we view our own investments? My answer is, it doesn't matter if it should or not. If it does, we have to deal with what is. But then on the other hand, I also want to point out that sometimes the volatility could become an alteration to your quality of life. If you act on it, if you give into it, if you capitulate into a fear, if you play into a greed, these are very classic um, investor mistakes that we work very hard to avoid our clients making that I think can lead to detrimental outcomes. But when there is good investor behavior and a rational absorption of what's taking place, it's why we work so hard. Um, why I am up at 345 every morning of my life reading and writing because that content that we create for clients, the information we want to provide, the investor education, the different tools and resources to help people understand our philosophy, understand what's happening in the market. I, I think some people enjoy it. I think it brings people into a certain process that can be in, useful. 
But more than anything, the goal is for it to reinforce trust and faith and confidence what's being done on behalf of our client's capital so that that trust and faith and confidence will rule the day when there is jitters, when there is vulnerability and insecurity, and and uh, that could otherwise potentially lead to a really poor decision. So I don't, we're not in a bear market right now. You know, markets on the year are only down about 1%. Um, and really a properly balanced portfolio, you look uh, at those that have bonds and alternatives and other things all in, um, because of some really good stock picking and so forth, people may not be down at all. If they are down, it's a fraction. They're not down from where they were December 1st, because December was a big up month. So it's been very volatile the last six weeks, but it's not really been fundamentally deteriorating. Maybe it gets worse. That could happen. I'm very concerned if we were to go into a full-blown trade war. I think that would have big economic impact. But my point is, is that um, from a financial planning standpoint, we're quite confident that clients, their liquidity needs, their long-term goals, the risk-reward uh, trade-offs that are being pursued, tax efficiency around what is needed are all being accounted for. So we don't believe there is risk of a fundamental deterioration or a quality of life compromise. We, we're confident of that. So we want that uh, lens, we want that to be the lens through which somebody understands um, volatility and thinks about it. Um, and and at, at some point in which you view risk and volatility as two different things, you'll be in a very different place as an investor. Risk is a real deal. It's the fear or the possibility of failing in a financial goal. And we, and we will not let that happen for our clients. We will work to avoid such a thing. Volatility, on the other hand, is part of being an equity investor. It's part of being a real estate investor. It's part of being a bond investor. The risks can be different in what type of volatilities are there, but there, it, it's complicated managing a full orb of financial considerations when one considers cash flows, inflation, reinvestment risk, um, tax efficiency. There's a lot that goes into it. And so uh, our our job is to, during periods like this, keep our eye on the whole ball, the, the most important things, the big picture, but not not getting into a place where there's actually risk of, of failing in our financial objectives. And yet along the way, trying to optimize opportunity around what the market gives. And, I, and I'm very pleased with how we're, we're doing that. And I welcome any questions people may have about our process there, the things we're buying, the things we're selling, why we're doing it, why we're doing it, when we're doing it, all that type of stuff. So tax season will be done here by this time next week. And uh, earnings season will be fully underway. So it's, um, it, it's a nice little transition here into the second quarter of the year. Um, really love talking with clients. Reach out to your private wealth advisor anytime. If you're not a client of ours, um, if you have questions about your portfolio, feel free to to reach out for that second opinion. If you, all of you, client or not, this market volatility is not likely to go away anytime soon. It may come down from the levels it's been at, but as far as um, the volatility that we're seeing this year versus last year, we expect more like that. There's a lot of reason for skittishness, but not a lot of reason for fear. That's my concluding comments today. Have a wonderful weekend.